everyone and welcome to another Foul Original. This video is made in part thanks to the Foul Original people over on Patreon, patreon.com slash Foul Original. More details towards the end of this video. We continue our look at the faction which helped catapult Impact Wrestling back into the mainstream wrestling conversation. A group of wrestlers ready to take over with increasingly more vicious tactics. TNA roster would try to mount a fight against this invading force, but they would be betrayed from within by the newly revealed Sergeant at Arms, Devon. However, a new member would be directly responsible for some of the unfolding chaos. This is part two of the story of the Aces and Eights. The Dock makes an impact. Aces and Eights followed a similar membership and hierarchical structure to motorcycle gangs. The tone, language, and demeanor of the group can be traced directly to the FX show Sons of Anarchy. Just like in the show, members of the faction would have to earn their place within the organization, usually through some kind of violent or criminal act to show loyalty. Until that point, they were known as a prospect and you can see this as a naming badge on all of the masked members of the group. On the November 1st, 2012 impact, during open fight night, Drew Hankinson would be unmasked by Joseph Park. It would happen in the brawl at the conclusion of the match between Bully Ray and Devon. Skip ahead a week to the November 8th, 2012 impact, and the Aces and Eights would formally introduce the world to Doc spelt D dot O dot C. This stood for Director of Chaos, and alongside Devon the Sergeant at Arms, the gang was starting to become more identifiable. Hankinson confirmed that he had signed with TNA on September 4th, 2012. He had worked as a mass member of the Aces and Eights group on house shows, and his eventual reveal was a major coup for TNA. Back to the November 8th impact, it would be stressed that Doc was still a prospect of the Aces and Eights. He would still have to prove himself. He would team up with Devon to take on the team of TNA wrestlers Kurt Angle and the icon Sting. The match would end with Sting winning again by disqualification when Devon would use his own trademark baseball bat against him. Doc would then brutalize Sting and put him through a table to show his loyalty and worth to the group. The attack was not over though, as Doc would grab a ball, peen, hammer, and a excessive amount of force not seen before against the man they call Sting for some time. The gang had left their mark once again in TNA. That Sunday on November 11th, 2012, TNA would have their turning point pay-per-view. Doc would face off against the man that prematurely unmasked him, Joseph Park. Park was defeated by Doc, who would show he was the big man to be reckoned with. However, later on that night, Devon would lose to Kurt Angle. Following week on the November 15th, 2012 episode of Impact, the Aces and Eights would pick their next victim in another meeting at their clubhouse. Doc would be asked by the still masked vice president if he thought he had made up for having his identity revealed early. Doc thought he had done, but the VP would make him hand in his Aces and Eights jacket. They would throw a dart at the same series of wrestler pictures from before, this time their attention would shift to the British, and later on that night, it would be revealed to be the wrestler known as Magnus. Magnus, of course, was the name that was arguably the face of the Billy Corgan 2017 resurrection of the National Wrestling Alliance, Nick Aldis. He was known as Magnus while working for TNA during his time with Doug Williams and Rob Terry in the heel faction the British Invasion between 2009 and 2012. That is of course something we will be looking into very soon. Magnus 
during this time was involved in a bitter feud with the then TNA television champion Samoa Joe. The two wrestlers had been a tag team for most of 2012 after the British invasion was disbanded. Magnus had challenged Joe on the November 1st, 2012 open fight night, but lost that match via disqualification after he used a wrench on the Samoan submission machine. This would lead to a no disqualification TNA TV title match between the two on the November 11th turning point pay-per-view. Magnus would lose this match as well, bringing us back to November 15th. The Aces and Eights would attack Magnus and in a vicious, sadistic ambush, Devon would attack Magnus with a baseball bat and Doc would use a ball peen hammer. They focused on his knees and would injure him in storyline. This attack would take Magnus off TV for the rest of 2012, but he would be back in a very big way soon. Later on that night, Kurt Angle and son of Eric Bischoff, Garrett Bischoff, would team up representing TNA against Devon and a still masked member of the Aces and Eights. We'll talk more about Garrett Bischoff and his time in TNA very soon. Garrett and Kurt would defeat the Aces and Eights even with the best efforts of Doc trying to give his team the win with some classic heel shenanigans at ringside. As a reward for his loyalty and after a bit of friendly hazing, Doc would officially be promoted from a prospect to a patched in member of the faction after a vote from the rest of the group. The ceremony saw Doc affirm his loyalty to the club and its members, a similar ceremony and process in the outlaw motorcycle club subculture is known to be quite common. It has of course also been seen in a lot of different media throughout the years. The FX show Sons of Anarchy would provide a lot of inspiration for this. Doc, now a full member of the faction and an officially patched in member of the Aces and Eights. The Doc was in and he was ready to operate. But that's all we have for this time. Quick question. What did you think of the evolution of Drew Hankinson from the WWE to Doc in TNA? Join us next time for the Aces and Eights Part 3, The Revolution Will Be Televised. A special thank you to our new Patreons over on patreon.com slash fouloriginal. As of the middle of April 2020, these videos are partially funded by people like you over on my Patreon. You'll see their names on screen right now. This episode was released first to the folks over on Patreon as early access content before it hits YouTube. Become one of Foul Original's pals, or as we call them, FOPs. If you join our community, you can get behind the scenes content and a chance to see regular exclusive content you won't see here on YouTube. Head to patreon.com slash fouloriginal and pick your tier. The tiers start from $1 and may not seem like much, but your support means a hell of a lot. It's like you've given me a vote of confidence. If you can't, then sharing this video really helps too. Like the video if you did, subscribe and hit the bell if you would, share if you can. This has been a Foul Original, thanks for watching, see you next time.